thank the Lord for this new opportunity that he gave us to study his word. Let us pray so that the Holy Spirit can be with us and open our mind, our heart to understand his word. Brethren, the message for today is keeping the Sabbath according to the commandment. Maybe some people would ask why talking about the Sabbath. We are already seven day Adventist reform movement. We already believe in the Sabbath. We keep the Sabbath. We, we were instructed in the past about the Sabbath. We, had, uh, we, had, uh, we have assurance about this. We are not in doubt. Why speaking about the Sabbath? Ben, well, the Bible says in the fourth commandment, the first word is remember. The big problem is that as sinful human beings, we are inclined to forget, especially God's subject. Then we need to review our belief. We need to be remembered. We need to be, to listen again, again. Someone said that the best way to teach people is to repeat the truth. The Bible itself says about that. You will repeat before thy children, walk with them, talking with them, resting with them. That's the method. Then uh, let us talk about the Sabbath. When the Sabbath, the Sabbath keeping came into, ex into existence in the creation, then the Sabbath didn't come during the Sinai, when God presented the law, or in another time. The Sabbath was instituted in, by the Creator in the creation. Let us read uh, Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Two, and, 2 and 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which he had made. He rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had, done, had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because he, that in, he had rest from all his work which God had created and made. Then we find a very important point here in this Bible verse. Then God and his work, he rested on the seventh day he blessed the seventh day and sanctified the seventh day. Very important, these points. Then God created, he ended the creation, and he rested on the Sabbath. He blessed the Sabbath and he sanctified the seventh day as the Sabbath. Then, uh, in reality, brethren, the Sabbath is not just a uh, duty. Sabbath is a blessing. Why? I heard many people saying, Ooh, if you had not the Sabbath, our life would be terrible. But many people think about the Sabbath only to rest, to, to stop working on the Sabbath. But Sabbath has a, a much more importance than just resting on the day. Let's consider. During the Sabbath, we had opportunity, special, a special opportunity to meditate upon the great power of God at creation. The same power employed in creation is available to God's children for Christian living and sanctification. There is a very important point also. Uh, God finished the creation on Friday afternoon. Christ finished the work of redemption on Friday afternoon, and he rests on the Sabbath. Then he rests on the Sabbath in the creation and after his death on the cross. Psalm 33 verse 9 says, He spake and it was done. He commanded and it stood fast. Then how did God create the world? By his word. His word has power creative power, redemptive power. Now, another very important point is that uh, before arriving at Sinai, 
before giving the, the Ten Commandments on the Mount Sinai, God warned the people about the Sabbath, how to keep the Sabbath, how to prepare for it, how to keep communion with the Lord. Let us consider uh, Exodus 16. There we find a series of miracles made by the Lord on behalf of his people. Regard the keeping of the Sabbath. God said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. That I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Let's consider this point, but it's very, very important. God gave manna every day for that day. We have a lesson here. In our, in the Lord's Prayer said, we give us this day our daily bread. That uh, teaches how to depend on the Lord every day. God didn't give manna for the whole week at once. No, he, ga he gave manna Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, he gave double and Sabbath, he gave none. What was the lesson here? Interesting that uh, every day people should go and collect manna for that day. And they, they should consume that manna that day. Otherwise, that manna will be spoiled for the next day. And then every day from Sunday to Thursday, manna was falling every day for that day. But Friday, God gave double, double portion. Why? Because Sabbath, they would not receive manna. They would receive Friday. And uh, if they didn't use manna on uh, other days, they would be spoiled. But Friday, manna was preserved for the Sabbath. And Sabbath, they received nothing because they received in double. And continue the word of God saying, and they gather it every morning. Every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. It came to pass that on the sixth day, they gathered twice as much bread. Then Friday they received in double. Two homers for one man, and all the rulers of the congregation came and told Moses. And he said unto them, this is that which the Lord has said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. Bake that which you, you bake today, and seize that you see. And that which remains over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. Then uh, let, us, let us review. Every day they receive one push for that day. Friday they receive double. And they should prepare that food for, for Sabbath on Friday. Friday they receive double. They should prepare that food for Sabbath. It says here, And they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade. And it did stink, neither was there any warm therein. And Moses said, eat that today. For today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today he shall not find in the field. Then Sabbath they receive nothing. Receive double on, on Friday. Six days he shall gather it, but on the seventh day, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. It came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for together, and they found none. <laughs> we find here some rebel people. God gave specific instructions. They should receive every day, the push for that day. Friday they receive double. 
and the Sabbath they received none. But people left the, the, their tent and went out to, to pick up manna on the Sabbath. And they, they could not find. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my law? See, for that the Lord has given you the Sabbath, therefore he gives you on the sixth day the bread for two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day, so the people rest on the seventh day. Interesting that here the Bible talks about the commandments. People knew the commandments. But God gave them in tab, tab, table of stones on the, on the Sinai. But they already knew the, the commandments before that. Every week during their long sojourn in the wilderness, the Israelites witnessed a threefold miracle designed to impress their minds with the sacredness of the Sabbath. A double quantity of manna fell on the sixth day, none on the seventh, and the portion need for the Sabbath was preserved sweet and pure, when if in any were kept over any other day, it became unfit for use. Then if people would try to keep manna from Sunday to Monday, they would be spoiled. They should receive the manna every day, every morning. Friday receive double, and Sabbath they receive none. They should make preparation for the Sabbath. In the circumstances connected with the giving of the manna, we have conclusive evidence that the Sabbath was not instituted, as many claim, when the law was given at Sinai. Before the Israelites came to Sinai, they understood the Sabbath to be obligatory upon them in being obliged to get every Friday a double portion of manna in preparation for the Sabbath. When none would fa fall, the sacred nature of the day of the rest continually impressed upon them. And when some of the people went out on the Sabbath to gather manna, the Lord asked, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? Then, brethren, uh, God performed some special miracles to give instructions in practical way to the people how to keep the Sabbath. Now, before, beside the miracles, we find some principles also. Observe. Let us remind us about the fourth commandment as we find in Exodus chapter 28 to 11. It starts this way, remember the Sabbath day. It's very interesting that the, this commandment starts with the, the word remember. Because Sabbath was giving that creation. But many people forgot the Sabbath. And uh, even God's people are inclined to forget. Then God said, remember the Sabbath. To keep it holy. Ah, brethren, you have here very important detail. Sabbath is not only to keep, but to sanctify it. Six days shalt thou labor, do all thy work, but the seven days the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, and it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strange that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them. And the rest is seven day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Then here God gives the title. What's what the reason for the, of the Sabbath? What's the base of the Sabbath? What's the beginning of the Sabbath? The Sabbath starting creation. It was hallowed by the Lord at creation. That's the reason why God said, remember. And here he includes the whole family, include those who are in our home, they should respect the Sabbath. God has given men six days wearing into labor, and he required that their own work be done in the six working days. Acts of mercy and necessity are permitted on the Sabbath. Let's keep in mind this point also. 
What can we do on Sabbath? What do we need to do on Sabbath? We need to care for people. We need to visit the, the, the sick people. We need to treat them. Then all the work that is necessary to preserve life or to recover a sick people, they should be done on the Sabbath also. Then repeat, act of necessity and mercy are permit on the Sabbath. The sick and the suffering are at all times to be cared for, but unnecessary labor is to be strictly avoided. Now here we find here the words of the prophet Isaiah in chapter 58, verse 13. Turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor find thy own pleasure. Nor does the prohibition end here. Nor speaking thy own words, say the prophet. Those who discuss business matters or lay plans on the Sabbath are regarded by God as though engaged in the actual transaction of business. To keep the Sabbath holy, we should not even allow our minds to dwell upon things of a worldly character. And the commandment includes all within our gates. The inmates of the house are to lay aside their worldly business during the sacred hours. All should unite to honor God by willing service upon his holy day. Now let us review this point because it's very, very essential. How can we keep the Sabbath? How can we hallow the Sabbath? How can we sanctify the Sabbath? Then our mind should be connected with Christ. Our mind, our words, our action, our behavior, everything should be centralized in Christ. We should keep our mind in Christ. Otherwise, we cannot keep the Sabbath. Then Sabbath is not just a day to stop working. No, not. that's part of the Sabbath. That's one blessing. But uh, it includes much more than this. God has given men Six days were into labor. Then when we say that the Sabbath is holy, it's because it belongs to the Lord, not belong to us. Then is the day when we should do only His will, not our will. Sabbath is a special day. Now let's talk a little bit about the preparation for the Sabbath. You remember that uh, in Exodus 16, God instructed his people that they should bake, they should cook, they should prepare manna for the Sabbath. Not, not prepare on the Sabbath, prepare Friday on the, uh, for the Sabbath. Now, going to the New Testament, we remember that Christ died on Friday at 3 p.m. Then we find a very important example of the falls of Christ. You remember that, that the women who followed Christ, they follow Christ to the cross and they prepare some anointment, some spices to anoint the, the body of Christ. But the Bible says, that day was the preparation. Which day? Friday when Christ died on the cross. And the Sabbath drew on. And the women also, which came with him from Galilee, followed after and beheld the sepulchre and how his body was laid. And they returned and prepared spices and ointments and the rest, the Sabbath, they accord the commandment. Let's keep in mind that uh, they, they kept the Sabbath after the death of Christ. That's a proof that the Sabbath was not changed from Sabbath to Sunday by Christ. Because they, the women, they respect, they hallowed, they sanctified the Sabbath after the death of Christ. Now, when we should start our preparation for the Sabbath? Not Friday. 
Friday is the last day of preparation. We should start our preparation on after sunset of the previous Sabbath. Then we should uh, dedicate Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And Friday, you should complete the preparation. If we leave everything for this, the Friday, the day will not be, will be sufficient. Then, the preparation for our preparation for the Sabbath should start on after sunset of the previous Sabbath. Then we should dedicate the whole week to prepare for the Sabbath. And Friday should be the, the ultimate day to, for, to, for preparation. On Friday, observe this expression here. On Friday, let the preparation for the Sabbath be completed, not started. Should be completed. See that all the clothing is in readiness, that all the cooking is done. Let the boots be blacked and the best be taken. It is possible to do this. If you make it a rule, you can do it. The Sabbath is not to be given to the repair of garments, to do the cooking of food, to pleasure seeking or to any other worldly employment. Before the setting of the sun, let all secular work be laid aside, all secular papers be put out of sight, including cell phones, uh, tablets, computers should be put. It is true, we can use it for the glory of God. We can use it for God's work, yes, but not to follow news of the world, politics, not, nothing of that. Before the set of the sun, let all secular work be laid aside, all secular papers be put out of the sight. Parents, explain your work and its purpose to your children and let them share in your preparation to keep the Sabbath according to the commandments. In many families, on Sabbath, boots and shoes are blacked and brushed and stitches are taken, all because the little odds and ends were not done on Friday. They did not remember the Sabbath day to keep the whole. Then those who practice the things on Friday, they are not keeping the Sabbath. They are breaking the Sabbath. Another point, very, very important point that we have been we have forgotten. Look, there is another work that should receive attention on the preparation day. On this day, all differences between brethren, whether in the family or in the church, should be put away. Brethren, I think that this is a very important practice that we neglect. It says here that every Friday before sunset, we should unite the family. If we had, have offended someone in our family or some brethren, we should make a reconciliation before the Sabbath. I think that this wonderful practice is forgotten. But we need to reform, we need to, re- to return to it. The first commandment begins with the word remember. As time goes on, we are inclined to forget many inspired instructions registered on the sacred book about the Sabbath. Now, what has righteousness by faith, justification by faith, had to do with the Sabbath? Very simple. In John chapter 15, verse 5, Christ said, Without me, you can do nothing. In other words, without Christ, we cannot keep any commandment. Then to keep the Sabbath, we need to be connected with Christ. We need to accept the righteousness of Christ by faith to keep the Sabbath holy. Let's consider what the inspiration says. No other institution which was committed to the Jews tended so fully to distinguish them from surrounding nations as did the Sabbath. God designed that its observance should designate them as his worshippers. It was to be a token 
of their separation from idolatry and their connection with the true God. Brother, how can the Sabbath deliver us, release us from idolatry? Look, the plan of Satan was to remove the fourth commandment of the law. Because remove this commandment, they remove God. Remove the creator. Remove the work of creation. Then people now are inclined to worship idols because they don't know the true God. But in order to keep the Sabbath holy, men must themselves be holy. Through, the, through faith, they must become partakers of the writings of Christ. When the command was given to Israel, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, the Lord said also to them, ye shall be holy men unto me. Only thus could the Sabbath distinguish Israel as the worshippers of God. As the Jews departed from God, and failed to make the rightness of Christ their own by faith, the Sabbath lost its significance to them. Satan was seeking to exalt himself and to draw men away from Christ. And he worked to pervert the Sabbath because it is the sign of the power of Christ. The Jewish leaders accomplished the will of Satan by surrounding God's rest day with burdensome requirement of, in the days of Christ. The Sabbath had become so perverted that its observance reflect the character of selfish and arbitrary men rather than the character of the loving Heavenly Father. Brethren, that's very important because uh, we can fall in the same problem. Then the, the Jewish people, they create so many rules about the Sabbath that people during the Sabbath were, were concerned about the rules, not about the Creator, about the loving Savior that we have. Then they, they made the Sabbath a, a burden for the people. And they, this way, they discouraged people to keep the Sabbath. Sabbath became a sign of suffering. Then we can fall in the same, the same problem. Sabbath is not a day to create rules, many rules, to control the children, we should call their attention to Christ, to his word, to his work. We are advised that we should, uh, on Sabbath, as much as possible, take our children to nature to contemplate God's work. This is a day of recreation, a day of pleasure, a day when we can meet the family, when we can go to church, have communion with the brethren, when we can go to nature to see the power of God. Then Sabbath becomes a real blessing. We should prepare a special food for Sabbath. Not much, much food, but we should prepare a special food for Sabbath. Then uh, the, the children, you remember the Sabbath with pleasure, with joy. Brethren, we are inclined to, to make the Sabbath a day of, uh, as a burden. And in many cases, our young people, they don't see when the Sabbath is finished to go to do something else. Then what the plan of Satan? To make the Sabbath a day of suffering, of fasting, and many other things, and to make Sunday a day of pleasure. Then people are trying to, to be happy on, on Sunday, not on Sabbath. Then God's purpose is different. He, we should go, we should go follow God's plan to make the Sabbath the best day. The day when we don't work, we meet the family, we meet Christ, we meet our brethren, we go to nature, then Sabbath becomes a, a real blessing. As the Jews departed from God and failed to make the rights of Christ their own by faith, the Sabbath lost its significance. But when, when the Jews people reject Christ, the Sabbath, the temple, they lost its purpose. That's the reason why the temple was destroyed. Because without Christ, we have the, the going to church has no purpose. Christ is the base, he's the stone. The, uh, the base of the, the worship. Then when the people create rules to, to make the Sabbath a day of 
burden, as a burden. They pervert the Sabbath. The Jews lead and accomplish the will of Satan by surrounding God's rest day with burdensome requirement. In the days of Christ, the Sabbath had become so perverted that its observance reflect the character of selfish, arbitrary men rather than the character of the loving Heavenly Father. The rabbis virtually represent God as giving laws which it was impossible for men to obey. They led people to look upon God as a tyrant and to think that the observance of the Sabbath as he required it made men hard-hearted and cruel. It was the work of Christ to clear away this misconception. Do you remember when Christ was visiting a church and he healed that woman, healed that man? What did the, the, the rabbi said? They planned to kill Christ because of that. <clears throat> the Sabbath is a day of rest, a day of communion with the Lord, and a day of helping people to visit sick people, to pray for them, to give attention to them. Although the rabbis followed him with merciless hostility, he did not even appear to conform to their requirement, but went straight forward, keeping the Sabbath according to the law of God. But let's keep in mind that the law of God is a law of love. And the keeping the Sabbath is a, a day of love, when we should reflect God's character to our children, to our brethren. Now, brethren, what do you think? Do we need a reformation about the Sabbath? Yes, we need it. As we consider all the blessings following the sanctification of the Sabbath, we conclude that we need a thorough reformation. Let us keep in mind that we cannot keep the Sabbath properly if we have no vital connection with the Lord of the Sabbath, our Savior Jesus Christ. Then what's what the most important thing on the Sabbath? Is to be connected with the Creator with the Lord of the Sabbath. Now, before resting on the Sabbath, we need to rest in Christ. Then we find this invitation in Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Said Christ, come unto me, all we that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Brethren, if we want to have a real rest on the Sabbath, we need to go to Christ. He is the creator of the Sabbath. He is the creator of man. And as we go to Christ, and we are connected with him, we find the rest in him, then and now we can rest on the Sabbath then there is a vital connection between Sabbath and Christ. Now, let's consider Hebrews chapter 4, 1 through 11. If you could follow the, the reading, it would be nice. Let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering to his rest. And of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest. I would like to stress this point, to emphasize this point. I will repeat. For we which have believed, do enter into rest. As he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest. Although the works were finished from the foundation of the world, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day, on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest. Seeing therefore it remain that some must enter therein, and they do to whom it was first preached, enter not because of unbelief. Again, he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long time, 
It said, Today, if you will hear my voice, harden not your hearts. For if Joshua had given them rest, then would he not afterward have spoken of another day. There remains, therefore, a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from his. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall in after the same example of unbelief. Brethren, here Paul is saying that we should uh, fight to enter in the rest of Christ. As you go to Christ, receive his rest, then we keep the Sabbath properly. Without Christ, it is impossible to keep the Sabbath. It is only when we enter in Christ's rest by faith that we receive grace to rest on the seven-day Sabbath and to sanctify it according to the commandment. But a very important point also is that uh, only we can keep the Sabbath according to the commandment when we are in Christ. Then separate from Christ, we can do nothing. Then when we study the life of Christ in the New Testament, he used to go to synagogue on Sabbath. He used to go to the mountains with his disciples. He used to heal people on the Sabbath. And when you start about the apostles, the apostles, they kept the Sabbath, even when there is no synagogue at all. There was no synagogue. They went to the riverside to study God's word. Then as we start, brethren, the Sabbath from creation to the last book of the, the Bible. Sabbath is a, a day of rest, a, day, a memorial day to remember God's power, God's love, and God's commandment. And we remember in Revelation 1, verse 10, that uh, Christ visited John, the writer of the Revelation, on the Sabbath. John calls the, the Lord's Day is the Sabbath. Dear brethren, we as seven-day Adventist reform movement, we should keep the Sabbath in communion with Christ. We should uh, re remember power of God in creation, power of God in redemption. And the last part of our title, the denominational title, is Reform Movement. We should improve, by God's grace, every day how to keep God's law, how to keep the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not just a duty, it's a blessing. It's a day of special communion with the Lord. As we mentioned in the beginning, we need to keep communion with God every day. But Sabbath is a special day when you can meet with him the whole time. May the Lord bless so that we can keep the Sabbath according to the commandment by the grace of Christ. That's my wish and prayer. Amen. Amen.